These days, it can be hard to trust the media. What's true, what's fake, and who is behind the message? I'm a freelance journalist and videographer who has spent years studying the media. Now I'm taking a look at what local, regional, and national news stories mean to us here in North Central Washington. I'm Dominic Bonney, and this is Common Sense. Hello and welcome to Common Sense. I'm Dominic Bonney, and today I want to showcase two stories of hope and service in our community. And I want to help correct the record because it seems there is some confusion about whether or not the Wenatchee Valley has a low barrier homeless shelter. First of all, we do. And second, before we move on, let me define what a low barrier shelter is. Low barrier shelters usually do not have curfews, nor do they require background checks, employment, or savings, chores, or mandatory attendance at meals or workshops. Experienced professional staff at low barrier shelters follow a harm reduction approach that does not require sobriety or mandatory treatment. It's often folks' first step back into society after years of being on the streets and off the grid. Many are in extremely fragile states, and how they are handled by the staff is make or break. Recently, Sean Arrington, the executive director and one of the pastors of Lighthouse Christian Ministries in Wenatchee, reached out to me and asked if I could help him let the public know that the Gospel House on South Wenatchee Ave is a low-barrier shelter. He said, I'd hate to see anyone homeless sleep on the street due to not knowing there is a place for them tonight. The existing homeless seem to know that because we meet with them daily. But God forbid someone find themselves new to homelessness and avoid a shelter due to hearing something untrue. So I went down to the Gospel House myself, took a look around, and interviewed Sean about the important work they're doing for folks on the extreme edges of our community. But first I want to showcase John Marshall and his son Charles, who is a wildland firefighter. John is a local photographer and outdoorsman who enjoys taking his, dogs, his dog for walks up Hay Canyon in, in Kashmir. The problem is that what John sees as precious public lands, others see as a garbage dump. But rather than complain on social media and move on, they decided to take matters into their own hands. Stay tuned after the break to learn about this two-man cleanup crew and what they did for our community. I'm Dominic Bonney, and this is Common Sense. You love to help others. You need a solid career. You can have it all with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take patient vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain medical records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, visit chartercollege.edu because we work to get you to work. Are you ready to freshen up your home? Boswell's expansive two-story showroom is filled with high-quality furniture that's always discounted to give you their best price every day. Boswell's is receiving new furniture deliveries each week, so you'll be sure to find just what you need for your home without the wait. Complimentary design assistance and free local delivery. Superior customer service and the best value for your money. Start at Boswell's on Easy Street. It's closer than you think. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Welcome back. Let's go to Hay Canyon now and see how John Marshall and his son Charles decided to fight back against litter bugs. I'm John Marshall and I live in, on the outskirts of Wenatchee and Hay Canyon is one of my favorite areas locally. I walk my dog up there maybe three or four times a week. Um, just an amazing dog walk in the ponderosa pine trees up to some great views. Um, and there's some really great people that go up there. I've met lots of great people on the trail, but there's also an element that has long used it as a trash dump. Um, this has been going on for years. Um, and about three years ago, um, a visitor who was a really good guy cleaned it up really nice. I mean, he spent days cleaning it up and it's starting to get bad again. And I was thinking, well, somebody ought to do something. Well, 
these tires really put it over the top. I don't know, you know, what these people are thinking, but they're basically transferring their private problem to the public. They dump the tires on national forest land, your land and my land. And um, obviously I didn't want to look at those and I didn't want to see them accumulate even more trash. Um, so I kind of called around, questioned, emailed, and finally got um, Chelan County uh, to agree to pick up the tab of disposal if I would pick up the tires. So I rec recruited my wildland firefighter son, Charles, who's much stronger than I am, because some of these tires are really big. And we got them um, all loaded up. Um, actually, we have to get one more load. And um, uh, they're, they're out of there. But this is an ongoing problem uh, throughout the public lands in Chelan County. Um, there's people that deeply appreciate nature and wouldn't let so much as a bubble gum wrapper land on the ground. And there's other people well, that will take their old refrigerator and just dump it in one of these side canyons. And it's just such a disrespect for the land and for everyone else. I don't really know what we can do to educate people. But the bottom line is if people like myself don't step in and pick some of this stuff up, the problem just gets worse and worse. And so I'm uh, trying to get these out of there before they attract uh, yet more tires and other rubbish. Commissioner Bugert put me in touch with uh, Chelan County Solid Waste Disposal. Um, and uh, they would have preferred to wait till April. But I really felt like we didn't need to look at that until April and it was likely to get worse. So I talked him into letting me uh, handle it right now. Um, it didn't take us long because we're really equipped well. Uh, having this pickup truck and a trailer, uh, I, was, I was set up to do it, which um, unlike other people, um, that would be a difficult job for them to do. For me, it was an easy job and I had Charles to pick up the heavy stuff. So. Um, other that I spend far more time making arrangements than I did actually picking it up. Let's say that. I think it would have been over $200. Um, uh, there's a tonnage charge and then there's a six or seven dollars per tire charge. And uh, they'll only let you bring in six at a time. They waive that for me. So yeah, it probably been out $200, $250. Um, Tried to get waste, hold the waste management to see if they'd uh, give me a discount and they flat out wouldn't. Um, you know, didn't get anybody local. It was a, you know, kind of a robo email situation. So I was disappointed in them, but um, the county definitely stepped up and uh, so we got this done for the time being, but I honestly don't know what we can do to make other people care. I mean, obviously there's a lot of people like myself that care, but the people that are dumping it don't seem to. And I, I think maybe that's a childhood education issue. Uh, I, for some people, maybe it's money, but I think it's probably more a combination of, of money and laziness. Uh, you know, just get it out of my hair and, and or kind of feeling like, hey, look at what I got away with. Ha ha ha. Well, I mean, there are some people that think that way. Uh, it's just the way it is. But if we want to live in a beautiful county, um, um, those of us who care have to make up the difference. Stay tuned after the break because we're going to visit the Lighthouse Christian Ministries Gospel House in South Wenatchee and see how the only low barrier homeless shelter in our valley operates and why that's so important. Highlander Grill and Golf Course is known as one of the finest wedding venues in the Wenatchee area. You do not have to be a member to come to Highlander. Highlander Golf Course offers a first class backdrop for your wedding day. Our friendly professional staff will ensure your wedding and reception is picture perfect from every moment leading up to the I do's to when the lights go down at the end of your reception. Hi, I'm Shalane, site coordinator for Highlander Grill. Give me a call to schedule your event today. 
Winter is a great time to trade in your current hot tub. Turn your old hot tub into money with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa's trade-in program. You can save $500 to $1,000 off of any new Artesian Spa or take advantage of a free Bluetooth music experience. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa recommends draining your hot tub every three months. Ask us about our drain and refill special. Stop on by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa today. At Washington Trust Bank, can't is a four-letter word. I think we should hire more people. Doc, I'm late for a meeting. I'm thinking of starting my own practice. Mm, do it. Too much capital. We need a warehouse. I can't imagine how we do that. We should knock that wall down and expand. Do it. There's always another wall beyond the wall. We believe you can do whatever you set your mind to, and we'll help you get there. Washington Trust Bank, privately owned, locally invested. Shalane Wireless is your Verizon authorized retailer featuring the latest iPhone and Android devices. Personal or business, they have the plan and the customer service you're looking for. In these challenging times, Bear Foods is open and ready to help. From health to diet to home, we are here to take care of your needs. Bear Foods, the good food store. From home furnishings to the latest in home entertainment technology, deep water home electronics can provide the selection and the connection for your wireless world. Welcome back. There seems to be some confusion locally about whether or not the Wenatchee Valley has a low barrier homeless shelter. While we do not have a publicly funded and staffed low barrier shelter, we do have one that is owned and operated by a private nonprofit called Lighthouse Christian Ministries. Let's take a look at that shelter, what it does for our community, and then after the interview, we'll take a closer look at why low barrier shelters are important in the fight against homelessness and addiction. Yeah, I'm Sean Arrington. I'm the executive director and one of the pastors of Lighthouse Christian Ministries. And today we are in the Gospel House. The Gospel House is classified as an emergency shelter here in the Wenatchee Valley. It's open to everyone. Uh, we're looking at these 84 beds that are available for anyone. Uh, that means people can come in in any state as long as they are safe. That's really the only regulation, the only rule. Please be safe. You don't have to be sober and you don't have to pay. Oh, okay, great. And uh, how many beds do you have here? We have 84 beds total that are available to people, and we have never once seen this facility full. And oh, it, we still have 84. Okay. We, we use, yeah, let's talk about COVID, how it changed the amount of occupancy. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, so normally we have 84 beds total available, but with COVID, we are down to half of that, which still hasn't been filled. But if we're looking at the six foot distance, we just take the bottom bed off of the bunk and put it on the floor, which we're more than willing to do in an emergency zone, which then brings us to nearly 80 total available. Nice. And so tell me a little bit about your um, decision to make this a low barrier shelter. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? And, and what need are you meeting there? Yeah. Um, so I lived for 15 years in homelessness, and so I see people who are homeless every day, talk to them, I'm friends with them, and I want to see them help. So I got really excited when I saw that the city was going to be taking on low barrier shelter. We were really hoping for it to happen before the cold weather hit last year during 2020, especially with COVID happening. And when that wasn't able to happen yet, we thought that we should make sure that our shelter had no pay, no sobriety, no requirements, just to make sure that people were able to have a place to be during COVID as well as during winter. And it's worked so well that we are remaining that way and we are gonna to continue to operate that way. Wow, great. You wanna show me around? Absolutely. Great. So people come in, they get checked in here at the front desk. Uh, they can receive a towel so that they can come in. And the first thing we want people to do if at all possible is get them to go ahead and enjoy a warm shower. They come into the hallway area we have three different wings. One of them during this winter is rented out to the People's Foundation for a cold weather shelter, which was in East Wenatchee last year. We wanted them to be able to have a place to operate. So they are behind the door at the end of the hallway. This is our men's section. You can see that we have a top and a bottom bunk. All of the top bunks are, that are green without blankets on them are not used. Since it's top to bottom, less than six feet, if we got filled up to the point where we didn't have room with a single person on a bunk, 
All we have to do is pull this bed over onto the ground, which isn't as pretty, but it's more than six feet, which gets more people off of the streets. Behind us are the bathrooms, men's and women's. Over here is the women's section and the laundry services. Laundry's done, I believe, three times a week. Here's the laundry area. Here's the women's section. We like to have them with a little bit barrier of privacy. It's the same style, dormitory style, bunk beds. And up here is the cold weather shelter for the Wenatchee Valley uh, through the People's Foundation. Wow. And how long has this shelter been uh, in service? About 2011, this has been open as a shelter for 84 people, never once filled. Wow. And tell me, um, how is it funded and, and how do you find the, the money to, to run this? Yeah, so this does not pay for itself, obviously. Uh, originally, we had the owner of this building, which was the old secondhand Dimitri store. He came to us and the building was empty and he wanted to know if the Lighthouse Christian Ministries could do anything in it. We saw the need to have more shelters available to people because there was no emergency shelter in town for families. So if you're a, a husband and a wife and you have kids and you immediately found yourself without a place to go, there's a shelter for men, there's a place for women, but there was no place where the whole family could be under the same roof. So this is the only emergency shelter for families, men, women, and children, as well as we also uh, allow people who are single to come in. There's no restriction. And so that began in about 2011. We ripped out everything, gutted the whole building down to the slab to where it was just a dirt floor. And it was all done off of volunteer basis and donation basis. So it took a while to get it to the point where it is. The heating and air conditioning was installed uh, via donation of Saucedo Connection. The, um, the union came and did the sprinkler system. People came and volunteered their time to put together bunks and to build these walls, to make the bathrooms. So all of this uh, took a while because it was done that way, but it was built perfectly suited for uh, the emergency shelter. Wow. So <clears throat> the, the potential of having people who are, uh, you know, high or drunk mm -hmm. and, a, and a family in, under the same roof, that, that's the potential. Has there been any problems? You know, we have not had any issues where... Um, we haven't been able to handle it either from within or with some help from the officers. We've never had um, in the gospel house, in the Lighthouse Christian Ministries part of it, ever had um, a person hit another person or attack another person. We have had people show tendencies. We've had the director threatened for his services and for his help quite a bit. But client to client, no. I've never had a family say, I feel threatened, I need to leave, especially when families come in. The Wenatchee Valley is so um, great at helping people. So when a whole family comes in, their stay is very short because they're able to get to the next level of services very quickly. I see. And how does this fit into your mission at the Lighthouse and kind of your philosophy on um, you know, how we treat others, mm -hmm. how, how the Lord wants you to treat yeah. people? How does, how does this fit into your mission? Yeah, absolutely. So we don't want anybody to be stuck in anything they don't have to be or to be going through difficulties alone. We don't want them to be homeless. Uh, we don't want them to be hurting. So giving them a place to stay, to survive is step number one. Um, reaching them and forming relationship with them is really what we do mostly over meal times because magical things happen over a meal, over a hot cup of coffee. But knowing that you have a safe place to be is, is step number one. And so I remember when I got out of homelessness, I had a bed that I knew I was going to sleep in the next night. It wasn't my bed, but I still cried myself to sleep every night because I was there, because I was safe, and because I felt loved. And so that's step number one. Build relationships. Learn people's names. Share your name. Let them know that they're not alone and who you are, and then develop growth out of that. Yeah, and can you tell me any success stories that you might have from from this work? Yeah, absolutely. You know, a usual recommendation for a shelter stay is 90 days. You know, you really want um, for most organizations to have a 90 day or less stay in a shelter. I can think of one gentleman that had been raised up in the valley, grew up in the valley, and also burned every bridge in the valley. So um, had, he had been removed from services for lots of organizations, 
He had burned many bridges with landlords and jobs. And so he actually stayed with us for years. Eventually, he became very responsible. He became very sober. He eventually became very financially stable. And he moved into his own place after staying with us for about three or four years because there literally was no place to send him to. But we weren't going to step out of his life because it was day 91. Now he is still housed. He's living up in Chelan. He comes down. He visits here regularly. He, he brings things to the clients. He brings things to the volunteers. He makes little wallets for them. He makes little leather craft for them. Uh, he has a, a collection of matchbox cars. And he buys those all the time. But he comes down. He gives them to the people that are in the situation that he was in as a token of appreciation. Wow. That's really cool. <laughs> How can people learn more about what you're doing and, and support what you're doing here? Absolutely. Anyone can call the Lighthouse. Anyone can come down and do a tour. They can look at WenatcheeLighthouse.org. I believe the best way is to come down and see what's happening and see how you feel led, see how you feel moved. Um, I've had uh, some people, remember we've never been full, I've had some people that really wanted to know what's going on down here. And so they just came and stayed the night. That's awesome. Is there anything else that you think the public should know about what you're doing either here or, or at your main location? And maybe you could answer also, how many people would you ballpark that you serve in a given month? Yeah. So we do always over about 5,000 hot meals at the soup kitchen alone. Uh, we have the new free food markets, which are on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And at that point, we're serving anywhere from 150 to 250 people every time we do a meal. Um, every time, or not a meal, every time that we do a shopping service. And, you know, this place is continuously running around 30 to 50 clients, depending on the month, depending on the weather. And um, we just want people to know that everything is free for people to come. Um, there's no demands, there's no expectations. You don't have to serve, you don't have to be a Christian, you don't have to be sober, you don't have to have any money. That the Gospel House is wide open to anyone, any lifestyle, any choice. Uh, we're here to support you, befriend you, and see you get to the next level where hopefully you will never need our services again. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, I had another question in my head and then I totally slipped my mind because I started listening to what you were saying. <laughs> Well, this is some really great stuff that you're doing here. Um, how long has the, the Lighthouse been in operation? Mm -hmm. Lighthouse received its nonprofit status late 2009. We opened the door to feed the first meal in February 2010. So we've been in operation running around 11 years now. And uh, we never planned to open an emergency shelter. <laughs> it just happened. We never planned to open... 40-person uh, women and children's transitional home, it just happened. We never planned to open a men and children's group home, it just happened. We never planned to open a clinic or a preschool. These things are just things that developed as we went. And uh, when, when called to do so, we just couldn't get enough sleep until we said yes to it. But we're running strong at about 11, almost 12 years now, and we're excited to go into the future. And we have a place for anyone at any level. Yeah, so that was going to be my question. Have you seen an uptick in, in homelessness, in um, people coming in and needing, needing help, needing um, food uh, uh, help and, and help with medical and stuff like that mm -hmm. since COVID? Yeah, we have seen, I haven't seen an up in the numbers of people that are homeless and I'm, I'm going by the people that are coming into our services. I have seen that since COVID hit, there's definitely more of an apparent problem of homelessness. That means it's more on the streets, um, not moving along, um, more grouped together. But it's the same people that I've seen in homelessness in and out for over a decade. I have seen definitely a need for more services when it comes to the area of food. More families that are in homes, in rentals, in mortgage payments, in or out of jobs are needing to have food services so that they don't find themselves in a homeless situation. And so that has probably gone up at least 10 to 20 times what we've ever seen in the past. And that's why our services are just opening all of our doors to all of our food supplies, to all of the people in all of the Valley. Yeah, are you guys worried about when this eviction moratorium ends that you're gonna see even more of an uptick? I'm very concerned with that. We know, I, I talk to landlords and I talk to people that are in rentals and there are people 
that are still in the rentals because of the moratorium. And I'm concerned that when that ends, we might have a lot of people and honestly, a lot of families that find themselves in homelessness for the first time in their lives. And that's something that would not only be scary for them, but it's gonna really see how the systems in the Valley work. And we're trying to prepare for that in advance by getting the word out and um, being strengthened in advance for that. And I know that other agencies and organizations are, and I'm just hoping and praying that that is not what happens. Yeah. Do you know, are other, are the cities, are other organizations, nonprofits, are they doing the same thing? Are they gearing up for this potential uh, uptick or, or flood of, of people becoming homeless? Well, I, 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 I would expect so. I don't know for a fact what their plans are. I know mostly how the organizations are operating currently. And from what I've seen because of 2020, everyone is doing this uptake, keeping up to things. And I believe that most of the organizations in this valley are responsible enough to know that at this point, we don't know when the end is and we need to pre be prepared for what may hit next. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for speaking with me today. Those are pretty much all the questions I can think of right now. But um, if there's anything else that you'd like uh, the public to know, let me know now and, and maybe you can, you can remind people how they can get in touch with you guys and help or learn more. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody can learn anything that we're doing best by calling or showing up. Wenatchee Lighthouse is a place where people can volunteer or give or learn more. And just one of the last things that I really want the community to know, not only people who are homeless need to know that they can come here, people who are homed need to know that they can send people that are homeless here. The police can do their job because they have a place to send people that they find on the streets. Businesses need to know that they can refer people here. And I really love that the city now knows that they can have um, a low barrier shelter available to the public now as we support their plan to build their own. Great. Thank you, Sean, for speaking with me today. Thank you, Dominic. Giving them a place to stay and survive is step number one, he said. Then it's reaching out and forming relationships with them. And usually that happens over a meal or hot cup of coffee. He didn't say step number one is to make sure that folks coming off the streets are sober. He didn't say the first step is to run a background check. He said step one is giving them a place to stay and survive. Because when you live on the streets, that's where you are in survival mode. I have spoken with former addicts who have said sometimes I got high on meth just to feel warm and, and keep going on cold nights or to stay awake because it was too dangerous to fall asleep where I was. How can you expect people to get clean and sober before they seek help at a homeless shelter? That's like telling someone wallowing in a mud puddle that he has to get clean before he can step out of the mire. It doesn't work that way. Those of us who have not personally experienced homelessness have no way of understanding what it's like unless we listen to those who have experienced homelessness firsthand. That's why it's important to listen to people like Sean who have firsthand experience and who are now working to lift others out of the gutters. Now I could end this episode with a litany of sources and data that prove that harm reduction measures like low barrier shelters and even safe injection sites are more effective in fighting homelessness and severe addiction than all the zero tolerance policies and draconian measures you can shake a stick at. But at the end of the day, we all know that it's not research data or studies that changes minds. What changes minds is walking a mile in someone else's shoes. So I challenge you to learn more about low, low barrier shelters, addiction and homelessness yourself. And a good local place to start that journey is at the Lighthouse Christian Ministries. Volunteer to serve a meal or stay the night at the Gospel House or just drop off a donation, stay for a while and strike up a conversation with someone currently experiencing homelessness. If you spend any time really engaging with people who are battling homelessness and addiction, I think that you will find that these people are not the stereotypes you see on TV and in movies, but rather people just like me and you. Someone said to me the other day, the only difference between a normal person and an addict is that first hit. Human beings are hardwired for addiction, whether it's drugs, alcohol, money, sex, religion, politics, power, video games, or whatever. We're all pretty much hardwired to be addicted to something. So let's step down off our high horses, allow the scales to fall from our eyes like the Apostle Paul, and begin to see homeless people, people for who they are. People, just like me and you. No better, no worse. I'm Dominic Bonney. Join me next time for Common Sense.